Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this f of x equals x times x minus 2. And I'm going to restrict the domain so that x is only greater than or equal to 0. And what we want to find is the new equation for each of these curves and also to see what it looks like. So first thing that we really want to do is we want to know what the original curve looks like before we go on to transform it. So this will describe a parabola. OK, x times x minus 2, so a positive parabola. x is greater than or equal to 0 here, remember, OK? So the, normal, the curve would normally come down through here, but it will get cut off at this point and then just come through, look something like that. So this is my parabola. It will be crossing through the x-axis at 2, and of course it's at that point 0 there. And it has this vertex, which will be at 1, because halfway between 0 and 2. And the y-coordinate will be 1 times minus 1. So minus 1. OK? So that is what the original curve looks like. Now, for the transformed curve, it might be a good idea to actually find out what the new equation is first, OK? So let's try it that way around. So y is equal to 3 lots of f of 2x. So I want 3 lots of this whole thing where each of the x's has been replaced with 2x. So this is 3 lots of each of these elements replaced with 2x, so 2x times 2x minus 2. Close the bracket. OK, so that's what we've got. So let's expand this out. So expanding the, first, the inner bracket first, we're going to have 3 lots of 2x times 2x, so 4x squared, 2x times minus 2, so minus 4x, and then expand that fully, so 12x squared minus 12x. Now if I refactorize that, I can bring the 12x outside and have x minus 1 inside. So it's easily being spotted as a curve that is crossing the x-axis at 0 and 1. OK, now if we think of this as a pair of transformations, what have we got? Well, we've got this f of 2x. Now that's stretching the graph by a factor of a half in the x direction. And we've got this 3 on the outside, which is stretching the graph by factor 3 in the y direction. So this curve is being stretched 3 that way and a half that way. So it'll look something like this, where because it's been stretched by a half in the x direction, we'll be going through 1. 0 will stay put, but we'll be going through 1 now on the x-axis. Its vertex will be halfway between 0 and 1, so that'd be a half. But its y-coordinate will be stretched by factor 3, which will be minus 3. So this would be the transformed curve, and that is the equation that fits it. OK? So that's number one. OK, let's try and erase that without rubbing out too much. Right, OK. So let's have a look at the second one. So y is equal to 2 lots of f of x take away 4. So we've got 2 lots of f of x. So 2 lots of x times x minus 2 take away 4. OK? So what we have here is if I expand that out, 2x squared take away 4x take away 4. OK? So if we, uh, we could factor that out, couldn't we? x squared minus 2x minus 2. And that's really as far as I can go with factorised form. OK, so let's have a look at this. What's this graph going to look like? Well, we've got the two lots of f of x take away 4. So clearly there's a translation here and there's a stretch. Now, it would be an idea to figure out which one came first. 
Was it the translation by the vector 0 minus 4? Or was it the stretch by the factor 2 in the y-axis? Or parallel to the y-axis? So, if we start with y is equal to f of x, okay, and we perform the stretch first, okay, then that's your stretch uh, in the y-axis, parallel to the y-axis, factor 2. And then we are going to subtract 4 from the y value, so that will be your translation. Okay, so the translation comes second here. Now, if you've done the translation first, and then you multiplied everything by 2, you would get 8 there. Okay, so you could do a translation by the vector 0 minus 2, and then you could multiply everything by 2. Okay, you could do it that way around. Um, either or, really. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the way around I had it. So performing the stretch parallel to the y-axis factor 2, okay, so we've got this um, curve being stretched by factor 2 outwards, so we would have 0, 0 staying precisely where it is. So if we do this in point by point, we've got 0, 0 will stay where it is because of the stretch, but will drop to minus 4, okay, when you have apply the translation. The 1 minus 1 after the stretch will be at 1 minus 2, but when you drop it down 4, it will be 1 uh, minus 6. So 1 minus 6 will be something like that. Okay, so the curve is coming around and shooting off like that. Now there will be this other point, the 2, 0, which will be at uh, 2, 0 after the, trans after the stretch, but after the translation will be at 2, minus 4. So that point is 2, minus 4. Now we could work out where this graph crosses the x-axis if we wanted to by solving that quadratic. Okay. So if I substitute in uh, that into my calculator, let's go with 2 minus 4 minus 4, and we get 1 plus root 3. The 1 minus root 3 is that point over there. I'm not interested in that. That point doesn't exist for me. Okay, So that is a sketch of what number 2 would look like. Okay. Right, so last but not least, we've got number 3. Okay, so y equals f of 2x minus 4. So the x here has been replaced with 2x minus 4. Let's do it with, uh, within the equation itself. So we've got 2x minus 4. That's now the x up front. And we've got 2x minus 4. That's the x within the bracket. Take away 2. So what have we got now? We've got the 2x minus 4. So if I factor a 2 out of that bracket, and then we've got 2x minus 6 here, if I factor a 2 out of the bracket here, I've got x minus 3. So that's 4 lots of x minus 2, x minus 3 in factorised form. Okay, so what is this actually going to look like? So it's giving me an idea of what it looks like because this is a parabola that crosses through at 2 and 3 uh, on the x-axis. Okay. Now inside we've got an idea of the transformations. We've got some form of uh, stretch by factor a half parallel to the x-axis and we've got a translation by the vector 4, 0. Now it would be a good idea to determine which way round those actually occurred. 
So if we've got f of x as our starting point, now if we apply the translation first of 4, 0, then we've got x minus 4, like so. And then if you apply the stretch by factor of a half, parallel to the x-axis, you get the f of 2x minus 4. So the translation occurred first, then the stretch. OK, so if we take each point in turn, starting with 0, 0, 0, 0, when you apply the translation, will move to 4, 0. And then when you apply the stretch uh, by factor of half, will then appear at 2, 0. OK. Now, let's go with this point next, the 1 minus 1. Once it goes through the translation, we'll go to 5 minus 1. But once it goes through the stretch, we'll become 5 halves minus 1. So 5 halves minus 1, somewhere there. Or 2.5 minus 1. And then finally, 2, 0. Once it goes through the translation, will become 6, 0. And then when it goes through the stretch, becomes 3, 0. So that's 3, 0. And so your curve will look like that. OK? Now, it's still only that part of it, OK? Because that is the full curve restricted by that domain. And so we, it must be just that. It doesn't grow an extra arm, OK, once it's transformed. That is still the shape of the curve. And that fits what we've got there because it's going through the x-axis at 2 and 3. Okay? So that's how we can work with these problems.